Today we've got a full in-depth review for you of Sigma's 28-70 to over here. This is for Sony full-frame mirrorless cameras, but it might be also available for other mounts as well. Here are some specs on this lens to get you going, guys. We're going to cover everything that matters to do with this lens. This is one of Sigma's contemporary lenses, so not quite at that art series level, and it's going to be reflected in the performance and, of course, the price. Now, this is a decently sized and uh, versatile standard zoom lens, and it's going to be a great performer, but does it stack up with all the comparables here today? And that's what we're gonna talk about as well. But first we're gonna jump into the build and features after we talk about who I recommend this lens to. Well, for me, this is not gonna be a professional lens. Although it is a great size and weight for travel and whatnot, it's not gonna perform up to the standards that most professionals are looking for. Having said that, like most lenses these days, this lens is absolutely capable of producing professional results. So with that out of the way, let's dive into the build and features of this lens. Now the build is the same Sigma quality that you'd expect these days. It does feel really good to the touch, it's well balanced, and it does have a firm rubberized kind of coating to it. Now the focus ring is at the back and it does have a very short throw going from 28 to 70 in a very short distance. This is going to help with easy target acquisition and at the front you're going to find a very well, quite stiff manual focus ring. Now the manual focus experience is definitely nothing outstanding. It is electronically coupled to your camera, so do take that into consideration. And it doesn't have any way of actually fine tuning your focus like the newer Tamron lenses, for example. Now in terms of buttons and switches, it only has one and that's an automatic manual focus switch. Now that's okay, that cuts down the cost, but it does leave something to be desired with maybe a focus hold button. And do note that this lens is not image stabilized. So the overall size and weight is pretty decent. It is a little bit heavier than I'd expect in this day and age, but in terms of the size, it's easy to throw in your bag and forget about and then grab when you need it. You're not gonna really fatigue too much shooting with this lens throughout the day. So it is gonna be a nice lens for you if weight is a factor. Now on the front, you'll find 67 millimeter filter threads along with Sigma's patented coatings to help with ghosting and flare. On the back, you will find a nice metal mount with a decently firm rubber gasket to help with confidence when it comes to weather sealing. Other than that, yeah, it's a pretty well-made lens. It's up to the Sigma quality that I would expect. And aside from a few maybe buttons and switches or a focus hold button, it's a decent build. And overall, I give it four stars. So let's have a look at performance now. This is why we buy these lenses. How does this thing perform? Well, it's pretty decent. In terms of autofocus, it's not the fastest and it's not gonna be comparable to something like the newer Tamron offerings with their VXD focusing motors. This is gonna be quite accurate and even in low light situations, it's gonna perform well in terms of accuracy, but it's gonna lag behind a little bit in terms of the speed of the autofocus. Now, don't get me wrong, it's quite capable and it's gonna handle most situations that you throw at it. It's just not quite as quick. And again, the price may reflect that. Now it's gonna keep up fine in terms of photography and video if that's what you're into. And one thing it actually does quite well is control focus breathing as you can see here. So that's gonna be great news for you video shooters. And touching on the focal length for a second, it's not quite as versatile as your typical 24 to 70. You're gonna get a little bit more on the wide end using a traditional lens like that. And on the Tamrons, you're gonna get 28 to 75, so a little bit more reach. So it's a little bit more limited than both of those lenses. But again, for the price, for the size, it's a decent compromise. And here's a few of my favorite shots as we get into the image quality now. Now being one of Sigma's contemporary lenses and not the art, they could have easily thrown seven aperture blades in here, but they did go with nine. So the bokeh for me is actually quite nice. Being in a traditional focal length, this lens is gonna be great at capturing most everyday things. It's not gonna specialize really well in anything. And as you can see here in the center anyways, the sharpness is decent. We'll pixel peep here in a few minutes, but one aspect of this lens that does fall a bit short after being spoiled by the newer Tamron lenses is its minimum focus distance. And although it's not terrible, some of the newer stuff that we're getting is near macro capabilities, making a lot of newer lenses these days just so incredibly versatile. Let me know what your thoughts overall about this lens are so far down in the comments, as well as what you think about my photo examples. Like I said, most lenses these days, this one included, can absolutely produce professional results, but it's definitely not perfect. Now we'll jump in and have a look at the sharpness and optics in a bit more detail. So here we are at 28 millimeters f2.8, which is wide open with this lens. Let's have a look at the sharpness and the optics here in the center. 
so the contrast is decent enough, but the sharpness leaves something to be desired. For me, at this price point, I really expect it to be a little bit sharper. And unfortunately, wide open, it's not really too far into the frame where it starts to fall apart. We've got some softness here, some kind of ghosting. And into the very corners, we can see that it's not a very good performance at all. We've got some pretty heavy vignetting and we will talk about the distortion in a few minutes here. But as we stop down to F4, you notice that distortion does improve and the sharpness definitely improves. So wide open, not a great performance, but as we stop down here F4 and F5.6, now it starts to become a pretty good looking image. Stopping down still down to F8 looking really good now and then down to F11, still like nice and bright, everything really crisp and sharp. It's not perfect, down to F16, and that's gonna be where diffraction starts to really kick in, and that's gonna continue all the way down to F22 here, where you will notice a bit more softness, especially in the corners. Overall at 28 millimeters, a less than impressive performance wide open, but it does improve as you stop down. And here we are at 70 millimeters now, let's have a look in the center. It's the same thing, it's not overly impressive, but it's decently sharp. As we get into the corners, it's a better performance than wide open at the 28 millimeters. And into the corners, it's a, it's a decent performance, it's mediocre. As we stop down here to F4, you can see that vignetting that was heavy at wide open does dissipate, and we see the sharpness does start to improve. It's the same thing down to F5.6, looking pretty good here. Not perfect, down to F8 looking, more like a pretty usable image from corner to corner, down to F11 looking good. And then again, the same thing up to about F16 is where we're gonna start to see a little bit of softness creep back in and down to F22. Of course, as usual, completely usable, but in the corners, you will start to notice a bit more degradation. The overall sharpness for this lens is less than ideal and definitely nothing impressive, especially wide open. And here's a look at the distortion and vignetting starting at 28 millimeters here. As you can see, there is quite heavy barrel distortion on this lens and the vignetting is not that much better either. It's quite heavy, especially wide open. As we stop down here to F4, you can see it improve a little bit at 5.6 and it's still there even at F8. You can see even at F11, it's starting to look a little bit more uniform here. So in terms of vignetting, it will be present throughout the aperture and yes, distortion, you will get quite a bit of barrel distortion here. And here's a look with the profile correction turned on, as you can see quite a drastic difference. So in terms of distortion at 28 millimeters, well, not super ideal. And here at 70 millimeters, it's the opposite. We've got some pin cushion distortion. And again, it's quite heavy with some pretty heavy vignetting as well. As we stop down here to F4, we can see the majority of the vignetting disappear. But once again, as we stop down to F5.6 and even F8, it's still present. So in terms of vignetting, it is quite heavy and distortion is the same thing. It's quite a bit of distortion here, more than I like to see. Use that profile correction to see the difference. And there it is cleaned up. Once again, I'll turn it off here. We'll go down to f2.8, quite heavy. And once again, with the profile correction turned on. So in terms of sharpness and optics as a whole, it's less than impressive, and I do expect a little bit better at this price point. And when talking about performance as a whole, it will get the job done, like I said, it just won't blow you away in any one regard. For performance, I give this lens three stars. And finally, we'll touch on the value of this lens quickly. And unfortunately, I think this is another area where it falls short. With the offerings available today at 799 US dollars MSRP, you can find it for a bit cheaper, but I think for that price, there's much better options available. The Sigma 24 to 70 art lens is bigger and heavier, but it's also much better performing. And I would definitely recommend that one over this lens for you. There's also, of course, the great lightweight Tamron 28 to 75, which does offer a lot more customization and definitely better performance. There is a new G2 version available, making the first version quite a bit cheaper. And there's no shortage of 24 to 70s, including the native options now, again, with updated versions being released, so you can find some deals to be had on the originals. This lens does have its great Sigma warranty going for it, but unfortunately, I give this lens just two stars in terms of value. So there you have it guys, there's my thoughts on the Sigma 28 to 70. For me, this is a lens that if you spend just a little bit more, you could get something just a little bit better. It does have some great qualities to it, but in this day and age, 
there's just better options available. I really hope this video helped you out guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. If you did want to pick it up, if you see a great sale and it might be worth it to you, I will drop affiliate links down below. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.